This video is a direct follow-on to my first look video on the Pimax crystal. And in that video, I stated that the Pimax crystal had given me the best graphics, the best image quality that I'd ever experienced in a VR headset. And that is still the case. However, it is a little bit disappointing that we can't use the full resolution whilst maintaining an acceptable level of performance. If you recall, we used the OpenXR toolkit and we had to turn down that resolution by some 20% to 3500 by 4142, I think it was. Well, I've been experimenting using DLSS, the image upscaling, which often improves performance. And the thought here is, can we use DLSS and improve the image quality at the same time, turn up that resolution? And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video today. But before we do so, one or two points that I think are worth mentioning. In my first look video, I said that you could use the um, Windows Mixed Reality for Steam free add-on with the Pimax Crystal. That's an error on my part. You shouldn't install that. In fact, it's recommended that you don't because it will limit the number of pixels that you're able to see and display. So apologies for that error. The other thing is I said that the Pimax Crystal is great for wearing glasses. It's no problem. And that is the case. But that's the case using this face mask here, the standard one that it comes fitted with, which has this forehead support that sits here. I've experimented using the thinner one with the idea of getting an even larger FOV. Well, if you wear glasses, this is a non-starter. And I also find it difficult to hold it securely on my head because of the weight of the headset without this forehead support. So just something to be aware of. The other issue I'd like to raise, and it is a concern, is that with changing the various face gaskets or face cushions some of the velcro has started to come away from the housing here which is a bit of a quality concern i'll keep my eye on it and i'll report back as needed anyway let's get on and let's test dlss in microsoft flight simulator and see whether or not it's worthwhile exploring further this is the sim hanger channel my name's mark thank you very much for watching and let's get started for all our tests, we're doing the same flight, a short route into London Heathrow. We're in PMDG 737-700 for an ILS approach, runway 27 left. My PC system specifications and all my settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator remain unchanged as shown in my first look video. Link in the notes below. I'm using the freeware add-on Pimax XR Runtime and the OpenXR Toolkit. For my first test, my OpenXR settings are, again, as per my original video, here's a quick reminder. These settings are used for both TAA mode and the first DLSS test. Turbo mode is on. Under performance, everything else is off or at default. Under system, we have override resolution set to yes, and we've scaled down the resolution to 3500 by 4145. So we're just going to run a vanilla side-by-side -side comparison. So we won't be taking advantage of and utilizing the improved efficiency of the Open Toolkit's upscaling algorithm. For all tests, DLSS is set to quality mode. And hardware accelerated graphic scheduling is on. We'll join the flight as we set up for final runway 27 left. Please note, due to the limitations and the way that we record VR footage, and the fact that this is a YouTube upload at 1440p, what you're seeing on screen and what I'm seeing in the headset are substantially different. As we would expect, DLSS mode is providing a better FPS compared to the TAA mode. We can see there's quite a few dropped frames in the TAA mode. The difference in the frame rate is not massive, 
and to be honest it's not really noticeable within the headset, but bear in mind I have a 1490 GPU. Less capable CPU and GPUs, or the gap between TAA and DLSS will be larger. The visuals within DLSS are not as good as that in TAA. Because this is the Pimax Crystal they're still very good, but they're not as crisp. And this is noticeable in two distinct areas. One in the cockpit looking at the gauges, they're not quite as clear. And secondly the amazing clarity that TAA mode is giving me in the far distance. With DLSS that's gone. I could of course further enhance DLSS performance by say selecting a lower mode such as balance. But I'd be reluctant to do that because once again it would be a compromise in terms of the visual fidelity and to some degree you would not be taking advantage of the Pimax Crystal's strength, the great visuals. When you've got a VR headset such as the Pimax Crystal, the difference between TAA mode and DLSS is perhaps exaggerated, or it'd be more correct to say it's much more noticeable. Bearing in mind of course we're not utilising the power of the OpenXR toolkit, but that test is coming up shortly. I have estimated the average FPS based on each one of these flights being done without the recording software running. The FPS that you've been seeing includes OBS, the recording software, and Flight Control Replay, which is the Flight Replay module, both third-party apps. The hit on the respective FPS is, seems to be around 4. So in the results above we can see that we gained an extra 5 FPS using the default DLSS mode. But there was a penalty in terms of the graphics fidelity. It wasn't a massive hit, but took the edge off the Pimax Crystal's amazing resolution and clarity. You should also bear in mind of course that we're flying a complex aircraft, PMDG 737 a fairly dense scenery area, and London Heathrow, although it's default, it was upgraded in the world update with multiple 3D objects and buildings. 5 FPS for my system, well it's not really worth it. So let's now move on and utilize the upscaling in the OpenXR toolkit to improve performance further, but to compensate for the downgrading in terms of the visual clarity, we're going to up the resolution. So we're back to the OpenXR Toolkit. Under the System tab, we'll leave Override Resolution on, and we're going to up the resolution to 3800 from 3500, and see how we do. Next, we're going to head over to the Performance tab, and enable the upscaling there. We're going to go to Upscaling Sharpening. We're going to choose CAS, which is Contrast Adaptive Sharpening, and I'm going to leave the sharpness at 70%. This has worked well for me previously. That's it, we're done, we're ready to test. This time we're comparing DLSS quality mode, default at 3500, and upscaled resolution and cast in the OpenXR toolkit. No scientific method in choosing 3800, it just seemed like a fairly substantial jump and the impact on the visuals is immediately apparent to me in the VR headset. Everything is absolutely clear once again. No trouble at all with anything in the cockpit. This is as good if not better than TAA mode. When I look to the horizon it looks fairly clear, but it's definitely not as crisp as TAA mode. But the clarity is there. To be honest, I expected a whole lot of shimmering, but I think the sharpening has dealt with that. There's very little shimmering at all. Utilizing the OpenXR toolkit, the 3800 resolution FPS is pretty much the same as the 3500. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that it's probably one or two FPS more. But despite those numbers, we're now moving fairly fast and close to the ground, and it's not quite as smooth. It's not stuttering or juddering in any way, but there are those micro pauses. So 3800, well I may have just pushed that a little bit too far for my system. So even at 3800, whilst very good, I probably need to back off 
I'm going to try maybe 3700 or something around there. Ignore the yoke jumping there, it's just the recording software. For those with a better CPU than my 10900K and faster memory, 3800 may well work. But as I mentioned, I'm going to have to back off a little bit. But it was an interesting test anyway. And the promise is, with using DLSS in combination with the OpenXR toolkit and its more efficient upscaling utility with the sharpening, it certainly holds the prospect of good things to come. And of course, there's other areas to explore, such as dynamic foveated rendering, amongst others. In terms of the results presented in this video, you should regard them purely as indicative, rather than set in stone, by being conservative in the numbers presented, but fully accept a margin of error of two or three frames as possible. While some interesting results there, they're not conclusive or exhaustive by any stretch of the imagination at this point. It's just my first stab using DLSS with the Pimax Crystal. But I think the takeaway is a very positive one. Perhaps your hardware is slightly under par to run the Pimax Crystal, while DLSS gives you that opportunity to get an acceptable performance. And particularly for those with stronger systems, and GPUs in particular, it offers the opportunity to crank up that resolution to get as much benefit out of the headset and its visual fidelity as you can using the OpenXR toolkit, as well as a higher resolution. Obviously, more tests to be done over a period of time, but it's a positive first step. Thank you very much for being with me today. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Stay well, take care. See you again soon and bye for now.